Hello, and welcome to the 10th video in this video series of using Godot with C Sharp and the Rider IDE to create and modify a 3D mesh. In our last video, we implemented a method that would allow us to pick a face on the cube and to um, highlight it in purple. And we were using an immediate geometry uh, node, a new one, to draw that purple triangle. And I promised that the next video was going to be about clicking on the cube and having the triangle turn purple. However, as I was working on the solution for that video, I realized that there's a, uh, a piece that needs to be done before we can do that. Actually, a couple of pieces. So the first piece is as I was working on it, um, when you're in the editor here, um, if you remember that in our code, we are actually taking this cube mesh instance and we are dynamically using the surface tool to create a mesh and then we are assigning the mesh to the results of that surface tool generation and that's fine for the code but when you're in the editor sometimes especially when this isn't selected the uh, cube mesh instance you know it's it's difficult to know like what's going on here so I think what we should do is we should create a kind of a proxy object just so when we're in the editor that we can see like about where our cube is and, and that way we have a better idea when we're in the editor of what's going on. It's going to be replaced in code immediately, um, but for right now in the editor it'll at least give us an idea of what's going on. And I think the easiest way to do that is to just select the cube mesh instance and go over to the mesh and just select the primitive mesh type, the new uh, cube mesh. And if we do that, we'll get this white cube. I'm not even going to bother coloring it because I don't care about the color. I just want a placeholder. And when we run the game, um, it's going to replace this white cube with our green one. So this white cube is nothing here more than just for the editor because when we're actually in our game, we uh, you know, have the green cube that we're dynamically creating. So the second problem is, so when we um, created this code that that creates an immediate geometry and then it, it highlights a purple triangle, well, if you remember, if you go to this remote area and then you go ahead and you look to see what's generated at runtime, you'll notice that, let's make this bigger, so we've got these, uh, these immediate geometries and specifically the one we care about for the purple triangle is the selected immediate geometry and it seems like that's good except if you look at our code um, and let me demonstrate this uh, by making a quick change to the code what the problem is and it's a fairly easy solution so if we go to our uh, draw uh, uh, draw selected I think that's what it's called yep draw selected outline so what we're doing here is every time you call this method, you're creating a new immediate geometry and you're assigning it uh, with the add child here. You're assigning it as a child of the cube mesh instance. So let me show you what the problem is, and it's really easy to demonstrate. So let's do the draw selected outline. Let's call this several times. So let's do the 0th triangle, the 1th triangle, the 10th triangle, and the 11th triangle. So the 0 and 1th triangle is the front face, and the 10th and 11th triangle is the right face. So let's go ahead and run this game. And when we, when we run the game, you're going to notice that all four triangles are selected. It's like a multi-select. That's not really what we wanted for this functionality. See, there's the right triangles. Um, nothing more is selected there but like this is 0 1 and I believe this is uh, 10 and 11 and we don't want that and in particular what we don't want is if you look at the remote here you're noticing see all these different selected immediate geometry uh, nodes that are added well we don't want that we want to reuse the same one over and over again so that's a fairly easy fix, but we have to go back to our code and accommodate that. So if we go to our draw selected outline, 
So what you're noticing here on line 347 is that we're creating a new immediate geometry every single time this method's called. And we don't want that. What we'd like to have happen is we would like it so that when the first time it's called, it creates a new immediate geometry. But any time after that in the game, it's just going to reuse the one that was created the first time. So the way we could simulate that is let's, uh, well, we're going to implement this, but the, the reason we're simulating this is because the multiple calls to this are going to be like when we click in the next video, when we click on a triangle, we want that current triangle we clicked on purple and the previous one we had selected to not be purple. And the code we currently have won't allow that functionality. So what we want to do here is we just want to define the immediate geometry and not initialize it to uh, a new one. And as you'll see here, Ryder is complaining here and it's saying, well, the immediate geometry may not be defined. Well, we want to define it only if it has if it doesn't exist already. So what we should do here is we should take this and we should try to get the node of that. The first time through it's not going to find it, but that's fine. And what's the path for that? Well, the path for the path for that should be it should be meshes cube selected immediate geometry name. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and so what we want to do there is when this comes back. And, and the reason we're able to pull this out is because when we were initializing the uh, original one, we were giving it a name, and this name is that name. So what we want to do is we're going to try to, the first time through, so let's pretend this is the first time this method was called, we're going to make this call, and it's not going to find it. Well, when it doesn't find it, it's going to return back a null, and so we can check that null. So we can say, if immediate geometry equals null, well, it didn't find it. If it didn't find it, we want to make a new one. So we want to do what we were doing before, which is to create a new one. And all this stuff here about assigning the name and the material, we want to put that in the first one as well, or in the initialization of the first one. OK, so the first time through, it's going to be null, and it's going to initialize all this stuff. And then it's going to create the triangles. The, the purple triangle, excuse me, singular. But what happens on a second call? So on a second call, it's going to find the immediate geometry. It's not going to be null, so it's going to skip all this. But now it's going to be adding more geometry to that immediate geometry. We don't want to add more to it. We want to start over from scratch. So the call we would want to make uh, to clear it out is, you know, clear. So clear will clear the geometry out of the immediate node. So the first time through, it's going to initialize the immediate geometry node because it can't find it. It's going to come back as null here. It's going to initialize it just like we were doing before. Well, it's going to clear it after that, but who cares? It's going to clear geometry, and there's no geometry there, and then it's going to set up the triangles. Well, the second time through, well, it's going to look for the immediate geometry. It's going to find it. It's going to skip over this, and it's going to clear out all the old immediate geometry. Fantastic. Then we can sit there and draw our purple triangle. I think the only piece we're missing here is we don't want to add the child uh, even if it's been found already. Um, let's do the add child in the initialization. Um, we don't have to, the add child doesn't need to be the last thing. Because we have a handle, this immediate geometry uh, variable, we can go ahead and add the child before we're done doing things to the actual node. So that's fine. I put it down there initially just so that we would have uh, some sort of linear you know, way of following what was happening, what was happening. But the add child can happen at the very beginning here. So that's not a big deal. So it's only going to be added once. And it's always just going to sit there under the, uh, the, um, the cube immediate mesh. So let's go back up to ready. And let's see, make sure the simple case works, which is only we're only drawing one triangle. So let's comment out these things. So this should give us the upper right triangle only. So let's go ahead to Godot, and let's hit the play button. And we should only have the upper right triangle. 
And although that is the case, I'm noticing something in the debugger area. You see this little thingy down here? Oh, it can't find that. For the first time, it can't find that. It's going to print that to the console. I wonder if there's a way to to catch that so it doesn't log that. Da, 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 da. Doesn't look like it's an exception, so I don't. Uh, I don't think I can catch it that way. I don't see it as an exception. It's just logging it. I wonder if there's a get node that doesn't log. Let's uh, go back to writer. Let's go to the draw select outline. So I'm wondering if there's a another get node I can call. Let's uh, node path. Ah, see, get node or null. Similar to get node, but does not log an error if path is not there. All right. So let's put this as a get in a, get node or null. Okay. Get rid of that. All right, so now this sh shouldn't log that. Because um, what was happening is the first time in, um, remember our code, by design, it looks for the node of the immediate geometry. When it doesn't find it, it creates one. And that's that. our intent is exactly that. Unfortunately, the, the get node by itself, it logs the message, which isn't a horrible thing that it can't find it. But in this case, we know it's not going to find it. Let's Let's not log it. So... Based on what we just saw here, this shouldn't log it. So let's play the game again, and let's make sure we don't get a message here. So we're going to run the game. And I'm not seeing a 1 down there. Fantastic. So we've got the one purple triangle. So that's perfect. All right. So now let's do those multiple calls. Now before, what we were getting is a purple triangle there, a purple triangle there, a purple triangle there, and a purple triangle there. All we're expecting is the purple triangle at this last triangle. So let's go ahead and uh, try that and see if that's actually the case here. Do, 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 do. All right, so now we're drawing those four triangles. Um, well, we're going to highlight those four triangles. So we're going to hit the play button here. And hopefully we just have the one purple triangle. So no front faces, so that's good. And on the side here, we've only got that one, which is what I was expecting. And let's go here, and let's go to the remote. And you notice underneath the uh, cube mesh instance, there's only the one selected immediate geometry. And that's exactly what we wanted. We didn't want those multiple ones. So what we wanted here, so like this triangle is purple. So like when we click here in our next video, when we click here, we want this triangle here to unpurple, turn green, and then for this triangle to be purple. And then while this is purple, let's say we click up here. We click here, this would go uh, unpurple, and this up here would turn purple. And we only want one purple triangle at a time. And we only want one of these immediate geometries at a time. So hopefully that makes sense why we ended up having to change our code that way. It's, it's not a horrible thing, but, uh, you know... I didn't want to add that to the next video because the next video is going to be busy enough with determining the angle of the normals versus the camera um, vector pointing into the cube, and that's going to be busy enough. I didn't want to add this this fix here. Plus, I think there's value in having that uh, proxy object uh, in the editor just so we can see you know, approximately what we're dealing with. <clears throat> so this should get us ready now. So really, for the next video we'll be able to um, implement the clicking and highlighting the proper purple triangle. So I think I'm going to end the video here. I hope to see you all soon. Take care.